And we are live. Welcome, guys, to another podcast, the fifth podcast, the fifth and final podcast before Christmas. And so, hey, guys, I'm interrupting myself to say, no, it's the last podcast before the new year. And I'm late uploading. That's why it's now after Christmas. I am Louise 21 I want to welcome you back. If you're seeing this on YouTube, yes, the quality is beyond terrible. But yeah, my webcam decided to die, so back to the standard webcam on this laptop. Just proper, like, not even 720p, it's like, but like, I don't know, it's not good. But if you're listening on iTunes, that doesn't matter to you, does it? Or SoundCloud, so welcome. I'm hoping, hoping, this is alright for you guys, I hope you don't mind. Visually, anyway, it's messed up. But if you are seeing the video... Behind me you'll see my Christmas decorations. If you've seen my latest vlog you would have seen them. But yeah. Another podcast. And yeah, I just want to review the whole year. From my point of view, really. And yeah, I could have reviewed like YouTube in general. I might review a few things. I will talk about some other things that have gone on in general in a bit. But for now... Just gonna talk a bit about my year so far. Anyway, guys, it's been a while. Well, it hasn't actually, but it's felt like a while. Like last Friday, I did the video thing. I uploaded a podcast, so I'm back. I'm back today. The last podcast of the year, like I said, oh, before Christmas. Yeah. So yeah, that's what's going on. And yeah, it's been a stressful year in general. In general, but, you know, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Gianluca Luisi, also known as Luisi21. Um, sorry about the bad quality camera. Yeah, not my fault. My webcam died. Might just buy a better one, to be honest. So this is what we've got to deal with today. Terrible lighting. But yeah, you can see my Christmas decks in the background. Just about with this camera. It's like whatever's built into this laptop. But yeah, so... If you're not already subscribed, do subscribe to Louise21 on YouTube. It's where we are now. But if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, yeah, follow, do, do go over to YouTube if if you want to. And I'll be here waiting. And, yeah. So lots happened in the world of YouTube. I mean, all, all the beefs and all that. I don't really want to talk about that today. I might do later on, but um, briefly, that is. Today's more about what's been going on this year, and it's not been easy, but I'll, yeah, I'll get into it, I'll get into the detail. But yeah, got a lot of family coming over, some of which have arrived today, and after I finish this podcast, I'm going to meet up with everyone. Then it's, you know, a bit of outing with the cousins, as we always do. Drinks, of course. But yeah, we're all at my grandma's for now, after, after this, literally. So you guys are holding me up, no. No, it's just one of them things. Everyone's at work still. I'm just talking to you guys. And the phone is ringing, obviously. And I'm probably... Yeah, I want to get that. Wait a sec. This week, I just want to review what I've been going through this year. Good and bad, there's been a lot of it. But, um, yeah, whatever you've been going through this year, it's probably been up and down. It's probably been not all sunshines and rainbows. Or all bad, really. I mean, it's hard to put into context, isn't it? A whole year's gone by. You can never quite say if it's been a good year or a bad year. I remember last year saying next year's going to be better. Better, you know. A lot of good things happen, but a lot of bad things happen too. But that's life. You have to roll with it. And I've been used to that, especially in my situation. Could be a lot worse, could be a lot better. But you, you know, you, you want to be content, but like happy with what you're grateful for what you've got. Um, in the workspace, in the work that I do on YouTube, what I do, if you can call it work, is fun. In that, I've definitely improved and this will, the will to improve has been there to carry on. I've had times when I wanted to quit, literally. I would have quit YouTube because of the things that happened on it and in my life. Um, you know, the last three months especially of this year have been difficult but great at the same time. You know, we've my computer is no longer activated. Wi-Fi connection has been lost, okay. 
But it doesn't matter, anyway. Um, like I was saying, I mean, it's hard to put into words. It's been a good or bad year, or an improvement of the year before. Of course, the end of, of uh, 2017 was pretty stressful too, um, which led into 2018. And, it, you know, it kind of carried on from there. So, but well, first I want to talk more about, you know, my YouTube career. And this is like almost like a, a rewind of my year, but I won't mess it up like YouTube Rewind, hopefully. So yeah, this year on YouTube, I've live streamed Fortnite and FIFA. Do you remember when I did that over the summer? Um, it started with, well, it started with GTA the year before, in my first year of, of uh, YouTube. And then I went to Fortnite when, when Fortnite came out. It must have been January last year when it really kicked off from there, you know, Ninja on Twitch. I started a Twitch. I haven't even written that down in my notes here. I started a Twitch account. That didn't go. That was for Fortnite live streaming. I alternated between Twitch and YouTube for the live streaming because YouTube I already knew how it worked. Twitch is completely different. I didn't have any luck on there to be honest. Well, I'm not even good enough at Fortnite to to do that. You know, if you're not familiar with Fortnite, it's a game where there's a hundred people on the map, and whoever survives and kills everyone else wins. Basically, that's the simple rules. And I wasn't too good at this game. I still played it time to time. Um, but just on the live stream, I, I didn't... It didn't hit off. I didn't hit it off with the live stream. Even for the FIFA ones. I mean, I've gone back and deleted some of, most of these videos because it's just not worth having on there with not many views. Um, I had a lot of chaos on this channel. I mean, I got, I've been demonetized, literally. My videos at the moment are ineligible to be monetized ever, as it stands. Um, but I've still been making them. I mean, I, I went through a whole ordeal of like trying to apply to get monetization again. But at this point, I'm just carrying on. See, see where it takes me. Keep trying to apply for monetization. Of course, I haven't got enough subscribers for that yet. But views are also very important, and I learned a lot this year. I mean, the other YouTubers I've been following they've. All, They've had stresses on YouTube this year because of the rule changes, not just me. Big YouTube YouTubers, all sorts. I mean, this year in general on YouTube has been controversial. You know, Logan Paul, all the stuff he's done or been through and the changes he's gone through. That's, that's the main... That was how it started, the year, you know, the main thing. But for me, it was just close, being closer to family, you know, after the losses we've had. Like, not just in the family, but friends, too. So it's been... Yeah, I can't put it into words. But yeah, so going back to YouTube. I had a movie made about me by some good friends of mine. Uni students, film students. And that was really inspirational, not just for me. Seeing it back, but seeing the response it got from my family and friends. 500 and something views. It's called No Legs, No Problem. It's on my channel somewhere, if you, you'll find it in my like top viewed videos. And I was really proud of that. And yeah, that was when I was um, playing for my new... When I started playing for this, the Parachute Football team I play for now. Muscle Warriors, the team that I joined, was it beginning of last season? Yeah, and that whole turmoil of uh, me moving teams and the stress that came with that. At the time, you know, you know, I've spoke about it in the past. It was very political and I felt unfair, unfairly treated, but that's... I got through that and th being part of this team was that. That getting through that difficult time. But I mean, that, that was last year. When I got changed teams. But making this... This uh, movie or documentary of like, getting to be part of that. They wanted to make it about me. You know, I was grateful when it came out in February and they did very well. They got good grades on that. And so, yeah, I started a podcast, of course. You know that. You know that. <laughs> um, I started an Instagram account just for YouTube. I bought it off someone else, if I'm honest. Um, and I've done live streams on there too. Me just talking about random things. And I also post on there regularly. Every time I upload a new video, I post to remind you guys, my fans. <laughs> I've had 
good feedback from fans on there, more than on YouTube, really, like in terms of comments and stuff, and asking me to put up live streams just because they like my live streams, which is good. And, uh, you know, I've made a lot of friends through this in my community of Power Chat Football, and people I know who watch it always telling me how, how they enjoy my videos. And it helps. It helps. You need that. And away from YouTube, I took part in a disability employability focus group. As a result, I was on the front page of the MDUK magazine. Now, MDUK is a charity that helps people that suffer from the same, not suffer, live. Don't, don't ever say, when you have a disability, don't say you suffer with it. Say you live with it because you, do, you don't suffer. I'm not suffering. Anyway, live, living with uh, this, the disability that I have. MD and MD UK is a charity that supports it so much and it's a driving force between like the, the, all the uh, us you know the people and the people trying to cure it and trying to make the world a better place in that sense you know free of illness which is very you know any any disease is difficult to cure you know especially ones that you know have an effect on a lot of people in different ways. So, yeah, you can read up on that, MD UK. Um, they actually sponsor the championship, WFA championship that I play in, in Power Chair Football, WFA being a Wheelchair Football Association. We are actually sponsored by MD UK, the MD UK championship, hence the name. So, yeah, it's a big connection to my life in that sense. So that was really good to be part of a focus group and at that focus group, I did try and inspire the others because they'd all been discriminated by in the workplace, in jobs they applied for. You know, people just didn't respect their the equal rights that everyone has when you're applying for a job, disabled or not, whoever you are. And I was trying to say, look, I didn't find a job. I made a job for me. And in this job, I haven't been discriminated in any way. You know, so I was part of this charity focus group. I've worked for them as a volunteer in the past. And they got me on the front cover of their magazine. And I was just shocked by that, amazed. To be honest, I had a chat with the, um, the, ca the photographer that day. The guy with the camera, basically. And he was local f to Whetstone as well. He lived around here. Um, so we had a good chat. So I think I got him on my good side. So he got a damn good photo of me. And then normally my eyes are shut. Or I'm in the middle of blinking or sneezing or something. Or like staring into midair. Like they always get you at the wrong moment. But this guy did me a favour. <laughs> Amazing. So there's been a lot going on in that sense. And in, you know, family life we've had, um, we've had banter and we've had difficult times. Losses and everything. And even... The friend that I lost at, at towards the end of 2017 was a Padre football team out of mine, R.I.P. Matin. He, yeah, yeah, affected our whole family because he has the same condition as me. So it was just like, damn, so close to home. Uh, someone you knew, you know, saw him two weeks before. He actually featured in the documentary movie that was made about me. He was in that, and then when that came out, um, to see him there was just. It's just emotional. It's one of them things, you know, not everyone has the experience of dealing with loss, but when they do, they don't know. No matter how many times, they don't know how to go about it, how to approach the situation. I mean, we're at the funeral seeing the family, the state of them, and it makes you closer to your own family. And that was literally December last year. And so over Christmas, we were a bit down. It was difficult to, like, celebrate Christmas and not feel guilty. Same this year, because the passing of my grandma three months ago, so this Christmas is a bit of a, was a bit of a downer in that sense. Um, but we're trying to stop that from happening with all the family we've got over, try and be peaceful together. It's important. Family is vital. You don't choose them, though. So it's been a struggle mentally, guys. And I'm sure you've all been there. But I'm not saying, like, you know, anything serious mentally, but 
just overcoming these situations. And when you you go through them, you don't quite realise till after, like, what you went through, if you know what I mean. And there's time, like, there'll be times when you think about it, or, like, for me, when a certain song comes on that gets you in that, that kind of mindset, it gets you, you know, every now and then I just, I'm always, like, people are always reminisce about times in the past, you know, past, things that happened that were great, memories, and all the memories of him, it was just, we were teammates, you know, before I went off and joined that other team for four years, and I'd, I'd come back that season to to the team, team I'm at now, and he was there, he was the, our main goalkeeper, and he was a, a solid lad, like, in goal, and he was always calm, always, and I tried to instill a bit of that in my own life and in my own way of being as a player and as a person. It didn't work. Like, I'm still tense as hell. Not te- I'm not tense. Um, you know, like I get stressed over little things, but when it comes to the big things, I seem to overcome them easier than a lot of people. I don't don't take that the wrong way. You know, I've I haven't been through nothing. Compared to some people, you know, there's always worse. Always worse. So, you know, uh, is it that bad? No. Um, there's always, a, you know, got a roof over my head that makes me appreciate the simple things. The the things that are actually of value in life. Because it can be taken away, like, within a second. As, you know, all these material things. <laughs> I'm not the only one, so. It's been stressful, yeah. Lows and highs. And it was coming to terms with that at the beginning of the year. Then, towards like March, I think I got really ill. And then, considering what, having lost my friend, it was like, hold on, what's going on there, you know? You, I don't know why, why my mind goes that way, but it did, you know? Should, shouldn't, shouldn't, but it did, and I was, like, worried about my health and worried about my family more than anything, like, thinking of what what they're thinking about, you know, in the, in the situation, that, you know, probably not as negative as me, but I was sick for about three weeks, like, severe cold, it went and it came back, I missed a weekend in Nottingham, like, Padre football, which was annoying, really annoying, I thought I was better than I wasn't. So that was a stressful time getting over that and I had to take a break from YouTube because I couldn't talk literally. It was just a bit of man flu, you know, really, but uh, I didn't recover that easily, I don't know. Um, so that was tense. Just getting through, and once I got through that, I just I was like, okay, it's not that bad. But at the, in the moment, I was really like frustrated because I couldn't go anywhere, you know. I was like, how did I get this cold? You know, I didn't even you know, run around the garden in a t-shirt, you know, <laughs> not that I could, but you know what I mean, figure of speech, figure of speech, you know, so I, I, that was, a, a lot of that time I spent on Twitch, I'll be honest, and I was going to sit here and like talk about every video that I made, but really, there's too many, <laughs> can't explain all of them in one podcast really, but there's been... I mean, the video I did when it snowed around the garden, that one got copyright strike, so I had to delete it, but um, I have deleted it the other day, actually. And that, when I saw it, it just reminded me how fun it was vlogging in the snow. There were donuts around the garden. And that, that was after I was ill, I think. Yeah, just after. And I started to recover, you know, I felt better. Felt good, everyone was a bit more, you know happy you know, as the summer was on the way, you know, it was like April time, by the time all, all the snow had gone and all that, looking forward to summer, you know, and I m- made quite a few videos over that time, um, some, like, there was one that I remember I made all about like my local area, North Finchley, and growing up around here, and from that I got inspired to make the movie that I made, like, I can't remember what it's called. It was, it was again, about my local area, but more whetstone-based, which is further, the, like, the, towards my house. Finchley's further 
further up the road. But so yeah, that was just to remember, to re reflect and like reminisce. I keep doing that. I do that too much. But yeah. Like I said I was gonna have all the videos in front of me and just go through the best ones, but I don't know, I might make a video out of that at some point in the new year. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone's doing like review videos of the whole year of what's going on on YouTube. Like I already mentioned Logan Paul, didn't I? It's been a lot on YouTube. All the beefs, I mean, now, like recently we've had the, the Deji and KSI beef and that's just really strange what's gone on with that. After well, after Logan had Deji on his podcast, you know, it's like been really weird. Like the enemy of your brother. They're, bo they're both their brothers are enemies, basically. And they, and, they, and he still did the interview and... That was like, wow. Deji's actually gone to Logan for this. He means be he's actually beefing with, with KSI. And there's been all the stuff that... That Logan did to apologise for the Suicide Forest incident. Um, you know... The suicide prevention and all that. And you've seen change in that person. In Logan Paul, I've seen his recent podcast. It's really good. And the interview, interview on Access Hollywood saying that he's not going to be a YouTuber forever. You know, and how he's changed. And, you know, if he've, he's changed in that way, anyone can change it for the better. I mean, I haven't made a mistake that bad, ever. So, that motivated me as well. Seeing what he, and how he came back. Because I remained a fan the whole time. Well, I was critical, but, you know. And, of course, for me, personally on YouTube, I've been watching True Geordie a lot. His podcast, his videos are really good. And all the people that are connected, like other YouTubers, you know, Joe Weller, KSI, of course. Um, the XO, obviously done by True Geordie and Lawrence as well. So there's a lot of channels there. Um, I've always been watching KC. That's it. You know, PewDiePie, subscribe to PewDiePie has been all over the news, you know, all over social media, like, and the amount of memes created from that. So, obviously there's there's more, more than that that's gone on really this year, isn't there? Outside of YouTube, you know, the Tyson Fury fight, the World Cup that England did so well in, but we didn't make it all the way, but we got really far. And... Yep, yeah, of course, the golf, well, I don't, nobody watches golf, but Europe won the Ryder Cup, that was a big thing, I remember, because one of the guys was, is it Molinari, he's Italian, so that was just another thing I remember, but you know, we all, it's all different, we're all different and we all remember different things from the year, and that's just one thing that stuck out in my mind, after watching Sports Personality the other day, you know, that reminded me of what England did in the World Cup, um, at the end of the day, Garrett, Garrett Thomas won the Sports Personality of the Year. I thought, really, Kane deserved it. Uh, Hamilton, no, I'm a Ferrari fan, so no. I wasn't going to let him win, want him to win it. Ever. <laughs> but, yeah. So, moving on. We get to about June in the year, and I'm still making videos, making these longer videos. Really inspired, really creative. You know, and then all the time getting ready for our holiday in August to Italy, where we had two weddings. Two weddings, you know, I've, I've summarised this year. It's probably things I've forgotten about myself. But yeah, anyway, we tell a lot. Wait, in June, okay. Before we, we got onto that, I was ill again in June for about a week. <laughs> I, I was ill quite a lot this year. And that was the same kind of cold, but that was for about a week. Um... And, yeah, so then, you know, the next month passes, they get better. We're all all right, we're all fine. Go to Italy. And it was, of course, a lovely holiday. We had two weddings, two great weddings. My uncle on my mum's side got remarried. Um, my cousin on my dad's side got married. So we had two weddings in different towns in Italy because my mum's side is from another town, which is about an hour away. It's called Avellino. Well... The, ta the town, the village we go to is called Candida, which is in the mountains. And where my dad's from, 
canals that in Puglia, which is southern region on the Adriatic coast. Um, we go to a little town called Canosa, uh, which is nearer to the beach. It's a different kind of landscape, more flat, you know. So we have those two different atmospheres of town, slightly different, well, quite different, because in the mountains there, it's like a smaller town. And, yeah, the different kind of atmosphere with the people. And, yeah, I'm not going to go into detail of the holiday because there's so much... So much fun, so many all-nighters. Um, but I really found a group of friends that I'm going to have for life. And it's been great. Like, this group of friends has been growing for years. Every time I went back there, I kept making new friends. People who lived nearby, the family like house in the town. And we've become famous there, really. All the people know us. Of course, my granddad is in this town quite a, quite a famous... Well, he's not famous, but like... Everyone knows him, you know, because the family name in this town is like that. It's quite small. Um, so, yeah, that's like something that really hit home and made me just proud that, I don't know, not proud of myself, but like amazed that people can, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't think I was that popular, to be honest. Didn't think that people, could, other people could like, see through the obvious stuff, you know. The, I felt like the, these friends of mine did. Some of them were known for about eight years. So, you know, but then you get to know other people they know, and it goes from there. And it was just really... I realised this when I got back home, though. Fine. Sorry, guys. And it was around the time of my birthday that we agreed to... Around the time of my birthday, which is 28th of August... We agreed to go back to Candida from Canosa, so from my dad's town, where I celebrated my birthday on the 28th that evening. And then after the party, me and my brother and one of my cousins, we drove back to that town in, in the mountains, Candida. We drove back there to meet up with our friends again. Uh, a good friend of mine, she was celebrating her... 22nd on the 1st of September so we agreed we'd stay till then you know but it was for other reasons that we went uh, my brother had actually um, like he was dating a, well that was the first night he asked this girl if he, she would date him basically it was like he was already kind of dating this girl like since we'd left the town on the 21st of August they're already like messaging all the time they really become close friends. Uh, this is basically the best friend of this girl that had a birthday on the twenty, on the first. So, yeah. So, Mass, my brother, that is. If you don't already know, <laughs> if you don't know me personally, yeah. So we'd gone back. The reason was to go back so Mass could be with her and like tell her how we felt, basically. So it was like me playing Cupid in some ways. So, my mom and dad didn't know this at the time. We said we were just going back because it was my, our mate's birthday. Obviously, they didn't know all the other stuff, the love story that was going on. So we got back there, and all our family that are there, we just at the bar. It's like it's like midnight. They're like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? You know? I was like, oh, yeah, we've got... My brother's like, oh, I've just got someone I have to talk to first. And in the most iconic way, just, you know, that, that video, that vlog, is just memorable for me. And then things hit off from there. I mean, what what do I know? I'm, he's not going to tell me anything. Um, so that was like Cupid situation for me. And yeah, we celebrated my birthday again there with all my friends there. And I realised that these are my real friends, really. I I mean, I've got schoolhood, childhood friends here, friends I've known for years. But they were like a group of us and it was like, and more girls than boys. So I was lucky in that sense. In some way, <laughs> if you know what I mean, in some ways, you know. Not just a group of lads, you know what I mean? That's different, but... So, yeah. And it was, like, a really great time. I couldn't believe that I had such close friends friends out there. Or, I, you know, when you make, made your friends already over the years, you know, you, you think, OK, that's it, I don't need any more friends. What do you mean? You can always meet new people. I always thought that meeting new people is the best thing now. And it is, because you never know if they're going to be your best friend two years from now. 
you, you, you don't know. And I um, did a whole Facebook post about it. Something about knowing who your true friends are. And it, it, it was true. I felt it in that holiday and even back in Canosa, we through my cousins, we made friends with their friends and I had a little group of friends there too, in my dad's town that is. But yeah, so we were trekking back and forward. It was all for this, for this girl, for, Matt, for my brother. So I felt like I helped him in that sense because the mum, mum and dad didn't really know at the time until we got back. They're like, oh, that's what you, you were going there for then. Because even my grandparents there were like, why are you coming back? You know, we didn't, obviously, they, I don't think they knew till till recently. But yeah, so we had a lovely holiday. Go back to Canorza, my dad's town, for my cousin's wedding. Another great wedding towards the end of the holiday. We actually stayed longer than most years. And yes, yeah, so I ate a lot of food, a lot of drink, a lot of banter, dancing, here, you know, all, all of that. So that that was great. And then we come back home. We've been home a week, right? We've been home since the 5th and it's the 10th or the 9th, sorry. I should, I should know this. But yeah, so I wake up to like mum and dad, like I can hear them in the other room, just like talking, like in a, in, like something clearly bad, bad has happened or happening uh, on the phone to one of my aunties in Italy. My, my cousin from across the street, who's originally from that town too, he's here. And everyone's like up in arms. There's a commotion going on basically. I'm in bed still. And I'm hearing all this. And I come to realise what's going on. Uh, basically it's my grandma. So we, as soon as we hear this. My parents are like rushing. Trying to get a flight to go over there. Um, at this point she's already passed. So it was like confusion. That, like that week literally. So they've gone over. Me and my brother and my cousin have stayed here. Um. And it was, they want, we wanted to go too, but we couldn't, you know, can't just leave everything. We've just been back a few days. And I, I don't want to tell you what the emotions I went through in that moment, thinking, I knew it was someone, someone that something bad happened to someone in the family. Just didn't know who. I was trying to calculate in my head, thinking too much. And I'm still in bed at this point, you know. And then, like every day, the carers come the, to help me in the morning get ready, get up, you know, get in my chair, all this, all the personal stuff in the morning you do. Um, you know, I'm going through all these emotions and having to, like, act normal in some ways. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not bawling up in tears you know, or anything. She's really, you know, that's straight. I'm not understanding what's going on. You know, all the, the grieving process you go through. It's early day, And I'm just trying to communicate with all of my cousins by then, by the time I'm doing that, everyone knows. Just trying to make sure other people are all right. People around me, my brother, my, my cousin, then they're, they're not. But holding it in, well, kind of holding it in. You know, and the way I do it was motion is just weird. And I came to learn it that day, that week in September. After this lovely holiday, you know, my grandma was there. She was at the wedding. She was very happy. Uh, everything was fine. She was well. She did have uh, type 2 diabetes and, you know, bad circulation and things like this. 81, she was. You know, we it took us by surprise, you know, because she was well. It was a very, like, shocking situation. So I'm sure some of you have had similar situations with loved ones. You know, we, you, no matter what age, you don't expect it, you know. Um, so we were really, really struggling at that time because my parents had gone away, so we are just left to our own devices at, I'm at my grandparents here at their house in the evening all the time for dinner you know we're all there and we just not not no one's right and we're still not no one's still you know just the way it happened it was early in the morning you know it's not nice this guy didn't witness the reaction of everyone else here because it didn't sound nice um yeah, I don't wish it on any on my worst enemy. That sort of thing. I mean, this is supposed to be a Christmas vlog, Christmas podcast. But <laughs> yeah, just trying to put into context this year, this year for you. And of course, after that, I got really ill again. I had this whole, I had a collapsed colon, my intestine. 
literally really painful you know stops you literally going bathroom and then you can't eat either because just nothing goes you don't digest anything and that, was, that it put me in a and e i was in a and e for 12 hours yes 12 hours one day it was a saturday you know there was nothing else i could do just all, all the tests that could possibly be done x-rays ct scans a lot of things you know and because they were worried that it could have been something serious and so it was just extreme pain i was in constantly like because it couldn't digest anything so then that's all good yeah fine yeah recover out of hospital did the procedure they did um week later i'm back in there no tell a lie i went in to the hospital i normally go in there do that look up that look after people like me i went in there for my usual checkup and it would happen to be like a few days after like two days after that Us- usual checkup i'm there i'm telling them all these problems that i went through they're like okay take these tablets yeah these laxatives if you feel it happening again if you feel the same problem or any pain take these and the next day you'll be fine obviously it's laxatives that are involved in this case because you know digestion yeah you get the idea anyway so they like take these so then it was a week later after that i took them these tablets called Ducalax, and then that caused the same problem that that caused the collapsed colon to happen again basically from taking them so i ended up back in hospital because some other doctors said oh yeah take this this will solve the problem. Do you get me? So one doctor said, do this. This will help. Like the expert on stomachs said, okay, take this. this you, you'll be fine. This will sort you right out. Yeah. It didn't. It made everything worse. And I'm back in hospital waiting for five hours for the same thing again. Only this time, I have to have a colonoscopy. And damn it. That was crazy. It wasn't pleasant. I hate hospitals. I'm always in them, but I bloody hate them. It's just like the worst. Like I wouldn't wish that on anyone either. This was probably a lot of it. I'd put down to stress how I got in this situation from. I, I don't know where it was because it it was that it started. I mean, it was the week after the loss of my grandma. So we're all just I don't know. It gets to you in some way or another. It affects you, and that's how it affected me. We think because. Yeah, in the evening I was going to my grandma to eat well, and she she's the be- best, my other grandma here, that is. My mum's mum. It's my dad's mum that we lost. Anyway, so I'm here, there, eating in the evening. But in the daytime, me and my brother just getting takeaways. And not eating right, you know. That week was just, and that obviously you wouldn't, would you? So, of course, we didn't tell the hospital that. They might have put it down to that as well, but it's still a medical thing that happened. And because of what they gave me, it made it worse. So then the stomach doctor at Barnet Hospital, where I'd been the tw- for those 12 hours at A&E, they already had my records and they were like, after the colonoscopy, they reviewed everything. They said, look, take milk of magnesia. This will make you go. This will be fine. And you should be all right. Um, you know, and I have been since. I've been fine. Of course, I've got to be careful. Not, I can't eat large amounts of food at once, basically, to avoid it happening again. But I'm fine taking this milk of magnesia, another laxative. So that that's disgusting. And I'm sorry you had to hear any of that. But that has been an ordeal and a half. That has really that really swayed me, like like held me back, literally. Couldn't make videos in that time either. But I I fought through it and here I am. So just glad to get through that because that was just stress. Because at first we didn't know what it was for a week. Didn't know. Okay, I'll take laxatives, I'll be fine. Nah. So one doctor says one thing, one says another. As good as the NHS is, short your shit out. Because communicate, you know. One doctor's got to communicate with another. Different hospitals, yeah, sort it out. And don't want to get me started on prescriptions for all these medications. It's a bloody nightmare because the chemist never know, never has it in stock. I'm just going on now, but yeah. So... This year has been about 
full of illness. And we having this loss affected all of us. We just had to fight and get on with it. Don't know how we did. All the families there at the funeral. Um, we've heard how it's been in Italy. What you do is keep the body at the house for the first 24 hours. Everyone stays there. People come to visit, give their condolences and they leave. Family's there, you know. Funeral's two days later. And my dad meets relatives he's never met. They've come to be there to give their respects, you know. And I feel for my dad and my aunts and uncles because they're really close. My dad was over here in England, so he was, he was the furthest away, really. He's like, why couldn't I have been, you know, in the situation you say? You say some things that don't make sense. He's like, why couldn't I have been, you know? But we always think back and we think it could have happened at the wedding or when we were in Italy, then we wouldn't have been able to leave. Do you know what I mean? But it was just how that went and put a bit of downer on things since then. But I had many weekends in Nottingham since then, but I absolutely smashed it, scored some amazing goals. I had fun with my teammates on the pitch and socially. It's been really great. And I've been really inspired with some of the vlogs I've made about Pouch football recently, especially the one about inches that I made. The game's about inches, you know. Life's just a game of inches. Made that video, and that's a culmination of the whole year of how I felt, you know. It's all inches, an inch here, an inch there, can make a big difference in any situation. And in Pouch football, especially, as in life. So I'm on. On this podcast is my podcast, and we're on episode five. Most podcasts don't get past episode seven, so we shall see in the new year. It's been a long, long journey. I've been doing reaction videos to vlogs in between that, of most in most of these situations. And yes, the first time I'm going about how I was going to explain the loss of my grandma on the videos. It took me a week to work it out. I don't know how I did it. It was like the 14th or something. No, it was like definitely after like 20th. At least 10 days later. And I just couldn't cope. Couldn't do it. Couldn't get around to making the video. If I'm that sad, it's difficult. But in a podcast, I can put, you know, I can put into perspective the whole situation. What happened, you know. So... Yeah, it's been an up and down year, as you, you probably can tell. And next year will be up and down. I just hope the great times will be better than the bad times. But remember, guys, just it's the difficult things when you're in. You feel like you're in hell when you're in the worst situation possible. Possibly, it's it's impossible to know how everyone's gonna approach a situation. But that's the time when you really prove yourself, when you show your true colours, when you're down in the dirt, you know. And when I'm playing patch of football, I'm using all that, the, the moment, the negativity, if you like, the difficult things, I remember them and use them as motivation to galvanise me, to get me up again, you know. Because we have our down days, our days where we don't want to do nothing. We don't want to talk to anyone, we're just angry at everyone. Angry with the world. I, I get days when I'm just frustrated. Especially about this whole YouTube demonetization and all that. It, it was, there's a lot, a combination of things. And when it was raining, it was poor. You know, when it rains, it pours. It was doing that this year a lot. You know, first my grandma, then I was ill myself. Then everyone was worried about me. You know, I'm trying to keep some comedy here. You know, trying to keep it light, it's impossible, but I found myself remembering the good times, you know. And someone told me that if you lose someone and you don't cry, it's because you don't feel any guilt. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of people cry. It's an emotion, normal emotion. People, you know, people do that when they, when they lose someone or when they're sad, something bad happens. But I didn't, and I thought, hold on, I'm not human. What's wrong with me? Why am I bloody crying? Um, my granddad here was like, well, 
it means you don't feel guilty. You don't think you missed a moment or you don't have any regret with that human being, with that person. And there was no regret. We had a great relationship. Some of my cousins might not say the same. Some of my uncles or aunts might not say the same. They might not have been as close. But for the ones who were, and my aunt who found her, found my grandmother and had to be the first to phone the ambulance, I don't know how they must feel. I, I don't know. It just makes you appreciate what you got more. And laugh more and have more fun. And when you're on a night out, make the most of it. Don't be stupid, you know. Just make the most of what you got. Enjoy it. you got to enjoy it. Just because something bad happens doesn't mean you always got to be like, oh, I can't have fun. No, that's wrong. Wrong way to do it. you got to try and be more open, you know. You know, think about what other people might be going through before you attack someone else, like, verbally or criticise someone else. Because a lot of people could have done that, seeing me. Like, people I don't, you know, might think, why is this guy got a chip on his shoulder? Not that I did, but you know what I mean? They might take it the wrong way and think, okay, what if, what's happened to you that's so bad that hasn't happened to me? And I want to move on for a bit, guys. And then after that, I will round it up. Because I've got things to do, family to be with, <laughs> to make the most of, yeah. Every second counts. So, yeah. I'm moving on to the music review. This new song, Beer Us by KSI and Randolph. It's not a diss track. It's not a diss track, guys. Beer Us is a god from a cartoon called Dragon Ball Z. Uh, a bit of a, looks like a minx or a cat. It's got really good superpowers. It's like a god, of, the god of destruction. And everyone says, oh, KSI, yeah. He always refers to God's Ares and all this. And he always says he's a god and all this. It's got a god complex. Or well, Deji says that anyway. Um, but no, KSI Randolph. The video is amazing. It's really creative and like... So it's like a Breaking Bad feel. Randolph is creating KSI. In this like... In milk, if you like. He's like in a, a vat of milk and he's like creating KSI. Piece by piece. And then when, when he drops, you know, his lines, it's really good. Some people hate it, some people love it. I'm not a big fan of K. Well, KSI is alright. I find him a bit annoying. Well, well, yeah, of course, I'm a Logan Paul fan first. In that beef, I was supporting Logan Paul. But I respect this song and the work they put in to make it. And the timing is just funny, isn't it? The t- very time when he's beefing with his brother and KSI. Deji's made a diss of KSI. But KSI said he will not make a diss of his brother Deji. He won't. I mean, all the falling out they've been through recently. However much of it's true, I know you got to put family first. But some fr- obviously, friends. Some friends can become family. And this Randolph is like, I think Deji's a bit jealous of Randolph's position. That Ra- that KSI gets on with Randolph more than his real bl- brother. You know, blood is thicker than anything else. I'll tell you that now. Whether you get on with him all the time or not. Me and my brother this year, oh, we've had, as it, like, uh, like any time, falling out and great times, you know. And we've been through it all. <laughs> so it's just, I got my wingman. That's it. Everyone needs a wingman. It's not always family in the end, but it's how that person makes you feel overall. If they make you feel crap, then... They're not the right person. I mean, I had the feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm quite accepting of what people do. But to a certain extent, I just get fed up. And my emotions kind of get ahead of me in my own thought process. In the end, I end up being nice, though. But sometimes you just got to say, no, I'm moving on. Some f- things can only go so far. But, like I said, blood is thicker than anything. And, but you can't choose your family, I've said that before. You can choose your friends, so choose wisely. And yeah, football this week, the Spurs, we beat Arsenal 2-0. Up the Spurs, and whichever Arsenal fan, stupid Arsenal fan, threw a bottle at Dele Eddie's head, mate, good shot, but come on, have some respect. 
Because that's where Dele Alli would have jumped in the crowd and destroyed whoever threw that. And then there was that Arsenal player, Socrates, like trying to stop him, hold him back. So what are you doing, you know? Anyway, that was funny. I was just... And then Dele Alli's reaction, the 2-0 sign. That picture was all over the internet. It's just a memorable moment. You look on, look, Looking back on that, you will be like, wow. I mean, there's so much in football that's gone on this year. But I don't want to talk about that because what's there to say is what happened. Most recently, Mourinho's been fired. On the Gunnar Solskjaer is the new standard in manager, caretaker manager. And in their eyes, he's got, I don't know, he's some sort of hero. Super sub, really. Great player and all, scored some important goals. But was he a club legend? I don't think so. And there's a Christmas period of football coming up. Remember, guys, in England, this is how it happens at Christmas. There's so many games. Like, no other league does what we do here. Remember when Balotelli was here, he was just like, nah, I'm not doing this. I'm not working on Christmas. And that, that, was, that was funny, that was. And the World Cup, yeah, I'm going to get onto that. But yeah, so to sign off, got quite a lot to say really to sign off. It's not really a sign off then, is it? But yeah, it's been a very difficult year. But it's had defining moments in my career, in my life. Some of which you may have heard me talk about. So yeah, as a person and and creatively, it's been a lot. A lot of development. I wanted to progress as a content creator on YouTube and other platforms. Hence this podcast. The difficult times have only motivated me and galvanised me to be a better person and to learn from them. You know, you, you've got to love overcoming difficult things. The, the, the work you put in to get anywhere. You've got to love something about, you know, doing that and the road to recovery, if you will, or redemption or improving yourself or furthering yourself in some way. You have to, you can't stay in one place. But what I've learned a lot this year is that true knowledge is knowing that you know nothing. And that that was on one of my podcasts. That was my second podcast, I think. But it's true. Don't ever assume you know everything about something. You know, you just got to be willing to say when you, this area you don't know nothing about. And you've got to be willing to learn. You know, you can know everything, but, but you can't know everything. You know what I mean? That's the whole reason behind that, but the willpower to learn is what will get you further. You know, the master is the master and they can't go any further, but the student can always progress. You know, you've always got somewhere, some way of improving, but where can the master go? You know, it's better to be the student than the master and the student can always teach the master new things. You know. I'm being spiritual there. (laughs) I think the most inspiring moment this year has been the the Tyson Fury, the journey back from mental health issues that he had, depression, um, almost committing suicide and all the things that he'd done. He proved that you can come back from the darkest times and be on the edge of oblivion, in his case. You know, he quit the sport he loved after he became champion. He gained a load of weight, really unfit, drugs, alcohol, suicidal thoughts, depression. He had it all, but he always was aware that he did have depression. Um, And there's a speech that he's done talking about that on the Joe Rogan podcast. Another thing that I've been watching this year, a lot to add to the list. Um, Yeah, he was on that podcast and he explained the whole journey that he went through to get back into boxing. And the journey is amazing because it you c- come to see how much he's been through Ask, in that interview after the Deontay Wilder fight. And Deontay Wilder beat him, yeah, but they did 12 rounds. He got knocked out and got back up. Tyson Fury is the modern day Rocky. And I'm really motivated by his story and how difficult it was and how he came back. Because not everyone, I mean... Not everyone is so lucky, but he said anyone can can do it. If can, you know, he was so happy. He'd won everything. He still suffered with depression, 
and he went through all this. Because he had everything. He had nothing more to fight for, to work for, to learn. He felt he'd done it all. And it, don't ever get to that stage. There's always more out there. But at the same time, what you've got, you've got to be content with that before you can go any further. You know, because it's always a risk. And he took that risk and he came back. Didn't win the fight, but he proved a point for mental health. And Tyson Fury should have been sports personality of the year. I don't care about any other sport or anyone else that did anything. What he did was just very inspirational. And it was a great fight. Deontay Wilder will be a legend. He is. He hits hard. Bloody hard. And of course, with the McGregor and Khabib stuff, in MMA, that was just immature and stupid from both of them. Chaos went on there. But that Khabib is a beast. But yeah. And remember, of course, KSI, Logan Paul. We've got the rematch of that. The rematch of that to come later in the year. Yeah. Like February, I think. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I mean, the mo- one of the most exciting things this year... And the most exciting times for me and the country was seeing England get to the World Cup semi-final. That journey was just sublime. The way we we fought every opponent. We beat who was in front of us, you know. Didn't have the most difficult run, but by God, we fought. And we fought hard. And they did us proud, the, the Lions, the Free Lions, England team, you know. So many legendary players that now seem to have fallen apart. Well, some of them. The Spurs ones are doing all right, but players like Rashford and Lingard, probably Mourinho's fault, but yeah. Anyway, that was just inspirational. And I made a lot of videos around that. And that was just a great time to be in England. And I'm, I mean, I forgot to mention that in all of the stuff I've been talking about, but even that was inspirational. Like a team that all, is always written off like, oh, yeah, they won it in 66. You know, they haven't won, you know. When was the last time we were in the semis? Like, 90s. Was it something like that with, like, I don't know, 1990 or something? And we did it again. We got to the semis. Croatia, it was... Uh, we were winning. Trippier free kick, amazing. And it just went from there, didn't it? Yeah, Croatia got back in the game and they, they beat us in the end. But, really, that game before that, when we got past Colombia, we won a penalty shootout. When do we win penalty shootouts? It was just amazing for all the players. And that group of players. And Gareth Southgate, of course, he got coach of the year. And rightly so, because nobody rated him before this. And we were like, oh yeah, Gareth Southgate, okay. He's a good geezer, yeah. Remember him as a player, yeah. You know, he was he was a good lad. I don't remember, but I mean, in general, like people remember him. The older generation. People my age, like, have never seen England team be any good, really. There's been teams, you know, 06 maybe. Maybe, but not not a team. Well, they weren't, it's not the best. But in terms of names, it's not the biggest names. And Pickford in goal, you know, that was a bit of a shock for some people. But he had to change it. He took risks. This was the manager that said to Rooney, no, 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 you're crap. Get out of our team. And he said, no, 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 I'm getting the youngsters in. Step to, to the side, please. Um, yeah, you know, he said in... I don't know what he said, but yeah, he said to Rooney, jog on. <laughs> and we got to a semi-final. I thought we were going to win that game and get in the final against France. I really did. I mean, I was so down that Italy didn't make it through, and I made a vlog when Italy failed to qualify against Sweden. We went out. I was so depressed. But again, how bad is that in my life, in the grand scheme of things? I've got a roof, you know. I got you know, So football, you know, at the end of the day, Watching it, like being a fan, is it's not like when I play the passion, it's another level, but yeah, guys, this is my last podcast and it's my last one before Christmas and before the new year. Happy holidays, happy new year! Remember, guys, stay up, stay humble, keep striving for more, be content with what you got, but always be willing to learn because remember, the student can always go further than the master. You always have more to learn. And just remember that when you're celebrating your new year, 
when you're sitting down to have your Christmas turkey, family comes first. And some friends can become like family, yes, but blood is thicker than anything. And make the most of every moment. Cherish them, you know. Just enjoy the good times. Fight the bad times, because that will make you appreciate the good times more. And above all, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Enjoy being together with your family. It's a time for being happy, time for giving, time for celebrating, time for being together. And blimmin' neck, it's cold. So wrap up warm if you're going out. I'm going to go and meet up with my family, have a jolly good time. Many, many drinks, many happy returns to you all. Good luck in whatever you're doing. And remember, I'll be there for you next year. And for whatever, whatever you've gone through this year, don't worry, it could always be worse. And I feel you. I, I, what, wait, that didn't sound right. I feel, no, that's an American thing. I feel you, bro. No. I get it, guys. And, yeah. Take it easy, fam. I'm Gianluca Luizzi, Luizzi21 Podcast. Episode 5 is now done. I'll see you back here for episode 6 in the new year. Take it easy, fam. Peace.